Okay, we're live again. It's vertical format. I'll let you into secret, dear viewers, because it's going to be for trade trade stands. Trade stands, that's what this is going to be for. I'm with Luke, Luke just, oh, I've got it. Lucas, do it for me, please. Please say your name properly. Okay, my name is Lukas Palkovic. Hi. Lukas Palkovic. There we are. Yeah, I, I, otherwise, I'm just going to butcher your name. And you're from a company called Evolute, and Evolute caught my attention because... Um, you have some carrier board devices that look quite complicated, quite big, and um, obviously feature packs. But I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I'm in, in let's say in the FPV world, uh, you'll have built-in speed controllers and things like that, and that makes things quite compact. But I say your units are a bit bigger now. Your units are a bit bigger than that. So what what would I need? And hopefully you've got one on the desk. Well, why why do I need your units? It's uh, quite simple. Uh, in certain applications, you uh, you are just not able to uh, run all the code that uh, you need, all the functionalities, everything on a single device, on the single cube, like uh, in this version. This is our drone car 2. Uh, uh, aside of the, uh, the cube, there is also the Jetson. In this case, uh, it's uh, the Orion X, and it's running the most... Uh, very complex code with a lot of uh, AI support and so on. So instead of uh, flying simply with a remote control, something like that, you are able to do very complex autonomous applications like, in our case, it's a uh, warehouse inventory. So the computer, oh, okay. is, uh, the computer, computer is doing a lot of uh, stuff like uh, taking care of where the drone is, so performing uh, localization based on uh, visual signal from several cameras, taking care of obstacles, and also controlling the flight where the drone should fly. So uh, following uh, some uh, marks, finding the labels on the on pallets, and so on. And in such case, so, uh, the, yes. No, sorry, I'm um, sorry, I, I, I jumped jumped on you there. So, so that's performing slam so uh, maybe hold it up and you've got another one with an orange cube we can see the orange cube i see the other one with yep. the orange cube so uh, the, yeah so so it's got it's got a jetson on on there to do stuff does that one also have a jetson the bigger one yeah, yes I see uh this is the older yeah. version the number yeah. one uh it contains uh, the uh the jetson the cube and on the other side it contains also uh four escs and in this case it's uh like a very powerful autopilot uh, where you can connect four motors, a battery, uh, a receiver, and you can start flying. And then there's a lot of uh, other connectivity options which uh, make it more uh, powerful, more uh, bring more functionality and so on. But the ba uh, basic function is like that. No more spaghetti monsters. It's our first drone. Yeah. Spaghetti yeah, monsters. That's... But with this, it's a very neat and compact design. So that's so that's what you're doing for me then by having this device is, or this carrier board is you're removing spaghetti, you're um you're a negative pasta salesperson. So it, it removes the spaghetti and has a more reliable connections. I'm probably taking words from your out of your mouth here, but more reliable connections um, to the speed controllers, and then that that Jetson that's hanging on the side is um, is chatting with uh, the cube. And saying, actually, I'd like you to turn right a bit, left a bit. So it's like a pilot and co-pilot uh, situation almost. Yeah, uh, more or less, yes. And uh, what I like to say is like uh, the cube is keeping the drone in the air uh, very reliably and so on. It's famous for, uh, for this. And uh, it's moving it actually from A to B. And uh, the Jetson uh, on the drone car says what the A is and what the B is. So I'm controlling... Uh, the flight on the on a higher level, and so the 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 Jetsons hand, handling slam then from cameras that you've got on board uh, a, a quadcopter, and is in the so I haven't prepared for this at all. And in the use case that you mentioned, which was warehouses, it's also got enough time. Not only it's the time to do the slam and to have a look look at labels and stuff, and start marking down what's there in the warehouse. Exactly. Uh, it's a lot of uh, tasks going uh, running in uh, parallel, and uh, there is still a lot of potential for uh, further improvements, like uh, checking what is around the drone for a safe safe flight if the, there is a person or something like this. So uh, the power can be used for new. So you've got. Have you got to? Are you? Are you well, 
you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but are you, for instance, on the flying side of things, running the RG Pilot stack on the cube and then running completely your own person labeling whatever uh, stack on the on the Jetson? Uh, it's an example of the application. Yes, uh, the Argo Pilot is running on Cube, and uh, our proprietary application is uh, running on uh, the Jetson. But uh, users get uh, users of the drone core get uh, some not so many, uh, not the complete system. They get uh, an open platform uh, with uh, software or open uh, software where they uh, they can. Uh, use their own uh, libraries, their own code, and uh, everything. They don't have to rely on uh, ours. They get a uh, jetpack that is uh, optimized for the drone core for this one, or the newer version, the drone core 2, and uh, they add their own libraries. And we prepared also uh, our drone core OS operating system, which uh, actually fa uh, facilitates the development for the future. So the users can easily flash, uh, communicate with the cube, uh, just off the shelf, uh, they can flash it, they can uh, easily uh, install uh, other cameras, and so on. So I would come to you as, as uh, so a warehouse is one uh, use case that you've mentioned. What other use cases might there be? Uh, it can be in uh, delivery. It can be also reconnaissance and uh, surveillance. It's a standard uh, thing a standard application we are used to it's uh, actually the most of applications uh it can be also a lot of things in uh, research currently yep and the uh, analysis inspections uh, other kind of inspections like in the warehouses there are clients who need uh, thermal analysis of the pallets if there are uh, batteries for evs they can overheat so this has to be checked and so on sure and the so that's so are we at the point, um, so the Cube Red is coming and that's way more powerful. Will that be yep. more useful with this sort of thing? Or is, I'm perhaps asking a question Philip wouldn't like from me. Um, or or is, is, the, is the autopilot good enough for the job? Or or will a Cube Red help you in this instance? Uh, what, with, uh, what I know, uh, or the Cube uh, Red is uh, more about the... Uh, redundancy and uh, safety, yeah. and uh, also there is uh, faster communication. For example, there is an Ethernet running between the uh, Jetson and uh, or some other computer and the Cube and so on, and uh, it can be also used on uh, our platform. Actually, instead of uh, the Cube orange or the blue, you can also use, uh, use the red. The only difference is that uh, if there is such uh, requirement, we have to populate uh, this special connector over here, uh, which is really designed especially for uh, QPRED. So uh, the red oh, okay. uh, so it's uh, already prepared for that, but there are minor differences why it cannot be uh, off the shelf for everyone. And uh, speaking okay. about redundancy, we <laughs> have actually also a special <laughs> Uh, one more microcontroller on this board, which can uh, uh, run one more Arduino pilot. So there is a redundant one already on uh, this uh, drone car. So you you run two instances at once, and do they check uh, check against each other? I'm not quite understanding but, that. Sorry, go again. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, such option. Uh, the coding is not uh, ready yet. It's uh, not off the shelf uh, prepared for that, but it's uh, future proof uh, for new applications. And uh, the other auto, uh, autopilot that is on board uh, can be used uh, either, either for uh, redundancy, as already discussed, or it can be used uh, actually uh, separately or it can act as a, some safety element or flight termination unit or whatever you call it. And uh, it can help uh, to assist uh, the system in unexpected situations in crash of, uh, in uh, case of a crash or something like that. So do you think, well, I get, you're going to have to, you're only going to say one thing here, but I guess this, what, what, what we're sort of pointing out is that we're moving into a different era of uh, autopilots and drones and having that companion computer on board that's very powerful and working with uh, the flight controller to get a lot more done. I suppose we could, you might almost argue that our tasks to date have been a little bit 
analog. I know they're not analog, but you know, follow follow a waypoint mission to create a map. Go up and down this line to do something else. Kind of, I want I do want to say analog, but I know it's not analog. Whereas yeah. this is expanding the the capacity a lot or capability uh, a lot more. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what I like to say is that uh, we are making some tra transformation similar to moving from conventional phones to smartphones. So it's a similar comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, 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 it's so I'm beginning to understand why. My, do you have to have one on a? Have you, have you got? I see a quad behind you. Have you got any anything fitted? Can we see one in situ? Yeah, I have an uh, example of a drone that actually it's uh, some kind of uh, experimental or educational drone. Uh, which looks like okay. Maybe you can so see it better. Is that, here. is that running? Is that running the older board with the with the speed controllers and everything? Yes, exactly. That one is uh, inside. You can uh, see the uh, yeah. orange spot inside there, and uh, the boards around are uh, the drone core. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, where do you think, see things going in the next ten years? Then, where where it are we heading be, towards? Yep. Uh, it will be a lot of more automation and autonomy and uh, a lot of visual systems and uh, yep. uh, so less, the, pilot, obviously... less pilot, more uh, computer. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the flying systems. What about ground systems, rovers and boats and all that sort yep. of a thing? Yep. Uh, the drone car can be also used for uh, ground robots as uh, there is the R2 pilot version, the R2 rover. Uh, which uh, which is made for uh, rovers. It can be used also for different kind of uh, vehicles. Uh, it depends. Also, the hardware can be optimized. I'd like to mention also the uh, basically the architecture of the drone car too, because uh, as you can see here, uh, there is an so-called expansion board with a lot of connectors. Some of them typical for the drone world some of them are not but uh, these are uh, more connecting to the jetson and uh, there is also the uh, pdb actually prepared for a small oh, okay. like fpv like uh, drone with the power pads over here and uh, there are uh, companies who really have their own design they need uh, more uh, some adapters breakout boards something which is making uh, their drones look like spaghetti monsters again. So uh, yeah, in this yeah. case, we are happy, helping them to uh, redesign this exactly to their needs. So if they need some uh, RS-232 or some other converters we added to this board, we can uh, extend the size and fit exactly the connectors on the places where they want them to be. So around the drone core, right next to the arms. So no more crossing cables and so on. Yeah, no, that's that's very cool. So that's what you'll do for me as a service. Then when I come with my business.com, we can we can modify this to to our specifications. And so so to be clear, that unit that you've got your hand in your hand there, if we had a fixed wing aircraft, for instance, that could sit in the center at a GPS outside, yes. sit in the center of an aircraft. It's got um, uh, uh, speed controllers there. So if we had a twin-engined aircraft, for instance, that, that's it. Add a GPS, and we're there. And we've got... Uh, then, okay. we, then, we'll, then we'll add a camera to it or whatever we need. Would you would slam with aircraft? You're not doing slam with aircraft or, yes, or perhaps... Uh, it's basically, yes, it's basically possible, yeah. And, and, and that's and how meant. So you could, you could, for instance, uh, navigate visually, perhaps, if the computer was fast enough. Exactly. The, uh, that, uh, that, uh, what it's, uh, it is meant for. Uh, there are connections for uh, cameras. So uh, maybe cameras connected here. Oh, okay. To okay. these connectors, it can be a stereo pair, which is what, uh, watching downwards and uh, uh, collecting the informa visual information, which is then processed in the Jetson and the drone knows where it is. If you lose yeah. uh, GPS, it uh, can use this source. Yeah, absolutely. So in a GPS denied environment, you could use visual navigation uh, rather than the GPS. Um, but yes. of course, you're, you're adding you're adding stuff all the time. But uh, wow, that's quite. A, I've got to ask the big question, I suppose. What's a, forget the blue cube because that'll be silly money. What sort of what sort of price are these boards going for? Okay, 
the price of the Drunkor uh, 2 uh, is uh, between two and 3,000 euro based, uh, based on quantity. Okay. And then for you to modify it for me, what's that going to cost? Uh, the modification uh, depends on the specification and uh, requirements. So uh, it can be quoted based on the request. Uh, feel free to come with your request or other uh, <laughs> other <laughs> readers or listeners or whoever is watching us. Feel free cool, to contact yeah. us. We are available for you. Absolutely. I'll put the links uh, down below. Good afternoon to you. Cool. Um, well, Lucas, thank you very much indeed. Um, that's super interesting. And uh, I think I think you've uh, you've pointed my head at places it wasn't thinking before. So um, all the best uh, to you and uh, everybody at Airvolute. So I'll put the links down below. And Divya will catch you as ever at 2100 GMT for our chat of nonsense every Tuesday. Cheers for now. Thanks very much, Lucas. You're welcome. Bye-bye.